Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Igaga, and I want to welcome you to our most special show in the month of November. Gentlemen, we have to grow our mustache. Yes, yes, mustache. yes. Hey, mustache. Peter, yes. look at me. Yes. I'm already, You're already there. Yeah. Mine is incoming. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. yes. Everybody's there. So no, I, actually, I have, I have the smallest one, so yeah. it's coming. Yeah. Now, we all know that the month of November is famous for dealing with prostate cancer. A lot of people call it prostrate, but it's actually prostate because nobody's prostrating. It's, it's about your prostate. Prostrate before the Kabaka. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, it's a touchy thing for a lot of men because um, some people don't actually know where it comes from. We are lucky to have Dr. Ronnie here with us who's going to talk to us a little bit more about cancer because whether we like it or not, everybody's either affected or infected with cancer. That's just the way it is. It's a rapid growing um, scourge and we have to do something about it. Now, Ronnie, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on your show. It's my first time here ah, and I'm to glad to be you. here with you. Yes, uh, we, we, we talk a lot. We say things, we get excited, you know, and sometimes <laughs> we get carried away, but that's just the way it is. Now, Ronnie, um, prostate cancer is a silent killer. That's correct. Yes, because a lot of men don't talk about it. Um, That's we die with it and um, uh, of course there are some uh, symptoms that come and I'd like you just to briefly just touch on one or two. I've, I've been told, I'm not too sure about it, is even simple things like the way you urinate as a man should uh, show some telltale signs. So what are like just three things to look out for to, so, be, to have your antenna up? Thank you Peter. So let me begin by telling you about uh, the prostate. The prostate is a very special gland just below the bladder. The bladder stores your urine. Then your urine travels down a tube called the urethra. Okay, so you can see it outside. So just below the bladder there, there's a gland through which uh, this tube travels. It's called the prostate. The prostate participates in, uh, in contributing to part of the sexual fluid that you see during sexual intercourse. So a prostate is you a very important semen. gland, part of your semen. It means semen. Okay? Oh, okay. So in, in semen, in that fluid, there will be the sperms and so many other fluids for so many other purposes, mm -hmm. lubrication and other purposes. Mm -hmm. So the prostate participates in contributing to some of this uh, fluid. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as we grow older, towards the ages of 40, 50 and above, for the main, uh, there is a tendency for this prostate to begin to enlarge, okay? What causes so, that? Yes, uh, the, the testes mm -hmm. secrete a specific hormone called testosterone for the men, okay? Mm -hmm. This testosterone has an effect on some of the layers in the prostate, mm -hmm. okay? Causing it to enlarge, okay? For most people who have prostate enlargement, it enlarges in what they call a benign fashion, mm -hmm. not dangerous, okay? Not malignant. The opposite of benign is malignant. Okay. Unfortunately, as it enlarges, it will squeeze that tube I talked about that brings urine. Mm -hmm. That's why the earliest symptoms that we see for individuals who have prostate enlargement are problems with passing, urine because urine passes through the tube which traverses through the prostate mm -hmm. for other people unfortunately it enlarges in a cancerous or malignant fashion okay mm -hmm. so there are two arms one arm is not dangerous it's benign and we call benign prostatic hyperplasia hyperplasia mm -hmm. increase in size okay or hypertrophy for some people okay increase in size. Now, if it is not benign, it is malignant. And that is the path of cancer of the what? The of the prostate. prostate. So let me ask you, um, okay, that sounds very academic. So ah, um, <laughs> need to just break he's, it been, down. he's been saying he's been saying it in 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 you know in uh, medical layman's terms and, and some medical so that the medical guys understand. Uh, and then the normal yeah, man also <laughs> understands. But <laughs> enlargement. Yes, yes, but he's been saying enlargement, enlargement yes. hypertrophy, yes. which is so you. Malignant, eh. Malignant, Malignant, is, cancer. Malignant is cancer, Malignant. Benign, benign is no cancer. That's why I wanted to ask does it mean either way it's going to enlarge as you grow older? 
Yes, either way it's going to mm. enlarge. But for some people, because of their familial history mm -hmm. and their genetics and the fact that you have a sibling or you have a parent who had this, this cancer and you inherited this ability mm -hmm. to have your prostate enlarge, yeah. some people will have an increased uh, uh, chance mm -hmm. of enlargement compared to others. Mm -hmm. Okay? But yeah. for every man, averagely, the prostate will keep enlarging until you die somewhere at 100. Uh, um, all right. No, and I have heard, and it's good you're the one who will be able to clarify for us, mm. that the best way to keep your prostate in check is to have regular sex. Well, uh, the man, by the way, doctor, that is very important. So, <laughs> continuous, <laughs> yes, yes. 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 So, so uh -huh. that, that is Peter saying licensed to kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, regular intercourse or shedding off, continuous shedding off of this fluid and continuous use of the testosterone, yeah. putting it to use continuously. Uh, which in whatever way you may you may choose to say, is 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 has been seen to be uh, advantageous, mm -hmm. or to reduce the chance of you getting this uh, 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 enlargement of of the prostate. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's in simple ways how I can. Uh, <laughs> can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. So is exercise? If someone does exercise, just basic exercise, not. But sex is kind of exercise. Say not sex exercise, but exercise. Yes. If someone does exercise regularly. Yes. Is, it, does, is that, uh, is, it also, is it also a word of reducing testosterone? Uh, not exactly. So you need to have sex to reduce hey, testosterone. Hey, now listen. If you, if you are around <laughs> no. 40 and above. <laughs> and I'm, I'm saying uh, that person the, who does. Listen, uh, at that age. the conditionalities uh, are like so. Uh, around 40 and going over. Mm -hmm. The prostate begins to enlarge. That's yes. correct. Because of uh, the testosterone yes. that creating comes from layers the uh -huh. in the prostate mm. that cause it to enlarge. Mm. Therefore, from around 40 going over, mm. it is wise that you have a way of yeah, exterminating. That, that's what I'm asking. Because I'm, I'm asking for my... Uh, you know, because my you father, are 20, yeah. yes, yes, I'm you are 20 for, something, yeah, you're, you're, you're okay. for my father, for people mm -hmm. like Peter, who yeah. are clocking those that age. Yeah. Do they need <laughs> exercise, not sex exercise? Exercise. No, the guy said no. 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 Well, Weight, weightlifting <laughs> does not help. Running <laughs> does not no, answer. Right. He has already <laughs> answered. Okay, okay, let him first answer. Let him first answer. But let him first answer. Are you deaf? The answer. man said no. no. I encourage you to have exercise. For exercise is good for you yes. for so many reasons. But uh, particularly, exercise may not exactly have an influence in what will become of uh, your prostate. Now, so, for us who are not married yet, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and, and, and we're assuming that mm -hmm. we're not having it. Mm -hmm. That's an assumption. Mm -hmm. That we're not having that. I'm mm -hmm. not having it. Mm -hmm. So how can am I is still liable to have? You're those, are you those? forty? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but I'm 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 at a higher <laughs> risk. I may get it at thirty. No, oh, at, at 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 forty. The doctor said forty. I think, but just to no, let him let him first say what just, you think. Yeah, just just one second. If uh, in line with what he has said, um, yes. The truth be told, we are seeing incidences <laughs> of mm -hmm. of prostate cancer coming up in the younger a lot earlier. Yes. 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 Uh, and I'll comment about that. The, the, the trend of, of, of disease, cancer, the trend of cancer disease has changed, uh, generally speaking. Not only prostate cancer, mm -hmm. we are seeing cancers present in, in a lot earlier. Breast cancer and all the other cancers, even cancers of the colon, of the intestine, mm. that we used to think are for very old people. Mm. We are seeing them in... Uh, in, in, in young people as, as young as, as their 20s. Yeah. So uh, some people debate and think that probably before these things happened and they were reported as a chizimba somewhere and somebody was buried without investigation and nowadays people show up earlier to get investigated in, in health facilities. Mm -hmm. Or lifestyle modifications and the changes that have happened in, in the near past account for this. But you're right. We are seeing these cancers present a lot earlier 
than they used to present. But so, so I, Peter, I mean, I allow, allow me to ask you. Mm -hmm. this, this whole thing about cancer, mm -hmm. um, first of all, I, I've read somewhere uh, on, on, on the net. I can't even quote where, but I have read. And, and what is said is that cancer is not really a sickness because it's about, you know, abnormal growth of cells. Mm -hmm. And um, what has been said is that if you starve cancerous cells of what helps them to multiply, you actually reduce your chances of having cancer. Um, I've been told about not taking sugar. I've been told about taking foods that are rich in vitamin B17. Um, what do you have to say about that? Because I, I, I really think, I mean, we joked about it, this sex thing is real. Uh, but, you know, for Father Albert mm. Um, mm. to live up to 90. Yes. But um, so, and yes. there are other remedies yeah. that, that, that can help to, mm. to, to reduce the multiplication of cancerous cells. At this rate, you may, you may begin dodging every pleasurable thing in the world because whereas you may dodge sugar if you're worried about cancer of let's say the pancreas and you begin dodging certain things because you're worried about certain cancers different cancers elsewhere are triggered by other things there can be cancer on any part of your body from the eye to the brain anywhere, the, the bone. Eh? So there is not much you can do to avoid uh, uh, these cancers. However, however, and this is the November month, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. prostate cancer, okay? We have to increase awareness about prostate cancer and what we advocate for is early screening. We want people to be screened early, okay? Uh, but for men, Approaching their 40s, men with positive family history of cancer, your father had cancer, you had your grandfather had cancer, it would be nice for you to show up at the age of 40 to begin getting the screening for cancer. Because once detected early, there's a chance. Just a chance. There is a chance. There's a very big chance. Actually, there's a role. There's a chua. It's possible <laughs> for you to have a chua. With our no. No. Just a chance, like no. throwing a dice. No, 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 no. Flipping no. a coin. Once detected <laughs> early, for example, oh, cancer of the prostate hmm. that has not spread elsewhere, hmm. there is radical surgery that we can they, do. They can exterminate the Yes, <laughs> there is a role. The thing, yeah. There is a role. But, but so we so believe in grabbing it early hmm. and doing something about but, but it. But still, that's just a chance. Yeah, yeah, and they cut you behind there. I also, I also think we need to understand one thing. And I think Chris probably may have grown this. Not all diseases can be fixed. Sometimes we need to accept he's a doctor. Sometimes they will say this case, well, let us just manage. So people should not fear dying. And, and <laughs> I want please let me develop my argument. Okay. Anyway. People should not fear dying. Why am I telling people not to fear dying? The end of every human being, living a biological organism, he will tell you, is death. Okay? So, let me tell you why I'm saying this. So, because we should not fear dying, we should not starve ourselves of the sugar. Please, consume the sugar. Yes. 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 The man has told you, yes. because the sugar has other food. functions. Yes. Has other functions. No blood sugar is worse now, than high blood. Um, we, 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 we are glad the, the, the doctor has said we need to look at the family histories. But I will, I, may I come from a, a, a part of a society where family history, it doesn't exist of illness. <laughs> My grandfather just died, we don't know what killed him. Well, we, so I don't know. So the best would be uh -huh. what he said that once you approach 40, uh, mm. just, go and, get just go and get screened. Mm. Uh, and and what the message I want to put out there to some of the men is that we are scared of hospitals. 
we fear hospitals because it makes us not feel like yeah, men, but let us go yeah, and okay. Now, we do have to go into a testing. break right now, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the testing thing because it's mm -hmm. not actually the fear of hospitals. It is mm. the finger. <laughs> it is the finger. <laughs> now, we are here at the Nagru Skies Hotel talking about prostate cancer. As much as we're smiling, it is a serious issue, and it affects all of us. Like for me, my grandfather died of it, my father died of it. Wow. So... Yeah, and I have gone tested, but it's, it's not as you bad. You have no right? So it's too late with you. So <laughs> don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with you. Uh, <laughs> I cannot. We not be <laughs> safe. Welcome back from the break. In case you just joined us, we are here at the Naguru Skies Hotel talking about prostate cancer in this month of November. Now. We have talked about how this thing comes about, but how do you get screened? How do you get tested? Doctor, this man has been waving his finger like this the <laughs> yes. whole time, you know. That is what men are scared of. Yes. I mean, finger. as a man. And in fact, if the doctor is as big as Peter, we know yes. <laughs> really. <laughs> You're worried. No, you're, you're giving him an advice. So, <laughs> so, it would be very good for a man above the age of 40 by himself to walk into a health facility and request to get screened. Yeah. He may have particular interests, let's say prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So when you walk into a health facility and you want to get screened for, for, help, for, for example, prostate cancer, the good doctor is going to have to take a brief history. Why? He wants to tease out some of the symptoms that could be pointers to an enlarged prostate. Mm -hmm. Like I explained that tube, that brings urine called the urethra that goes through the prostate just after it leaves the bladder. Mm. It can get constricted progressively as the prostate enlarges. Okay? And so the, the, the evidence would be obvious that if you used to pass a jet of urine like that in a projectile way, it can no longer happen. Okay? You dribble urine. Urine dribbles. Okay? It no lo you no longer have a, a complete stream. Mm. You no longer have the jet. So the test is in the bathroom. Yeah. 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 If you can <laughs> help for. No, no, for. These are small clues. Yeah. These are small yes. clues from yeah. history. Projector. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. uh -huh. and, yeah. and progressively, mm -hmm. you will discover that because you cannot manage to project all the urine in it, the stream that you used to, some of it is retained in the bladder. Mm -hmm. Okay? Urine is a very good environment for germs to grow. Once it's retained in the bladder, you get frequent urinary tract. Infections. So you begin urinating frequently. Low abdominal pain. Incomplete emptying of the blood. So you will see the doctor trying to tease out all this from the history. That is step number one. Okay? Prostate cancer. Okay? After teasing out the history, he's going to request to do an exam. On you, mm. uh -huh. particular to this cancer, <laughs> particular to this cancer, <laughs> and please do not feel uncomfortable at all. It is a standard uh, uh, exam oh, done. Oh, what about standard. the yes, the, the PS, PSD? PSA. I'm coming. PSA. I'm coming. Oh, right. So particular to this uh, uh, cancer, prostate cancer. Okay, the doctor may tell you to lie in a certain position to your left side. Okay, mm -hmm. so that he can access and be able to feel your prostate. Okay? From Using from his from finger. From now, a trained, from where? the finger of a trained doctor, okay, through your anal area, should, an yes, anal area, mm. should be able to access, okay, and feel for the what? For the prostate. You can easily feel through <laughs> for the prostate. November. November. Now, we, want to we want to go to December. Now, please, <laughs> do not be afraid of this procedure because you and me can testify that I think you have passed maybe a huge piece of stool before <laughs> through that area. So the finger is... Uh, no, <laughs> you see the difference is it's yes. coming out. Yes. The that has gone back in. Yes. I don't pass things and they go back, back inside. Yes. So <laughs> normally... Normally, yeah. okay, that area has a sphincter. We call it a sphincter, okay? <laughs> it can contract and relax. Mm -hmm. If we tell you to relax with very good counseling, a doctor with a finger that has been oiled, because we put a jelly there to oil. Oil. No, yes. Yes. Okay. 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 to oil. Yes. Okay? 
I got the PSA. Can be able to, <laughs> can be able to, to feel mm -hmm. for the prostate. And it gives us so many clues. It's so amazing how much information we get from this. So what okay? All the time you're conscious. With, with the trained mm -hmm. finger, with so, the trained so what hand. Does the finger tell you? Doctor? Yes, with the trained finger from somebody who has, okay, developed the expertise <laughs> of touching so many prostates, you can be able to approximate the size, okay, so that you know the size is abnormal. You can be able to feel if the nodules are many and it can become, it can become, it can have so many nodules. Mm -hmm. Okay, on it. You can be able to tell if it is bleeding or not. This is a lot of vital so, information. So, so do you have a glove on or it's yes, yes, of was. course you have yeah, a glove on. So how are you I actually forgot. feeling all those yes. things? You, you, you can feel you have knows. read about them so, doctor, and you know them and you have touched others before. You, you just I am coming. Okay. 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 <laughs> so this, we started with the history yeah, we skipped and now we have done an, an exam. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we are going to go and do tests, laboratory tests. Okay, particular to the prostate, the prostate spits some, what they call an antigen, like a mm. chemical mm. in blood that can be tested for. Yeah, the normal range is known, zero to four nanograms mm. per mil. Okay, those are units, yes. the units. Yeah. The normal range is known, zero to four. Mm. Okay, when they test your blood for this PSA, prostate specific antigen, it is specific to the prostate, okay? They will be able to see that this is out of range. range yeah. And every time it's out of range, there's another test that can be done, mm -hmm. okay? Actually, two other tests. They can do a prostate ultrasound scan, mm -hmm. okay? Ultrasound scan, again, they get a probe, and they pass it behind and assess the whole prostate. Camera work. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, or they can access and assess the prostate by doing an abdominal scan. Okay, but it's more particular with the prostate. You get a more precise uh, result when you use a prostate uh, ultrasound scan. Mm -hmm. After doing that, if you, they did the PSA and it was suspiciously high, the prostate scan is saying the prostate is enlarged, we can go ahead and take off a biopsy. A biopsy is taking off a small bit of the prostate. Okay, behind there, there are some special trocar guns. Eh? Can put and take off a bit. Does that guy still have an ass? You be your team, you, you <laughs> no, no, your no, no, no. This is something a, very a small. Probe. There's any other area. Uh, then we take this sample to a pathologist who looks in a microscope and tells us the integrity of the prostate. Mm -hmm. So these are the ranges of tests that can be done. Uh, before you ask the good doctor, let me ask you yes. my yes. question. Yes. Now, doctor. First of all, all that happened to Peter. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Yes, we did. Doctor, assuming that I have a sick, I am sick, and then you operate to remove this sick part, can I still continue firing my guns <laughs> no. as a man? Can I? I think so. At least the, the, the pleasure part of it, the, the reproductive part might go. Otherwise, you're going to, you're the not, pleasure you're going to encourage people so, to go to uh, Significant, what I have to tell you is um, I haven't come to the bit of operation eh? because we operate for so many reasons. Eh? Mm -hmm. Imagine, so after taking off the other sample I told you, if they take it to the pathologist and he tells us this is a non-dangerous prostate, it remains. It's a okay. To Google. It is just an enlarged prostate that is causing you discomfort with passing urine. Mm. We take it out. Okay, the sexual function will be affected. Okay, but the chance of you passing urine is improved, and it's so amazing how important it is to be able to pass a jet of urine. What? Okay, I can assure you, it is very, very important. You, okay? But you can no longer sexually function. You will sexually function, hey, okay? We, we because that out there. because the strength for the erection and uh -huh. this whole yes, yeah. comes okay. from <laughs> comes because from because comes from the testes. Because doctor, I the need testes are still there. Doctor, I need but you're not yes, yes. The prostate prostate you still have a power bank. As a man, the men we are talking to there, yes, have one key thing they don't want to lose: their ability. To, to function. To function. Sexually. Sexually. You to can meet take a woman anything. and have sex and enjoy it. You mm. can take away anything, anything even from the a man. If even the legs, even the arm. 
But as long as that function remains, yes. then a man will, will be more responsive to whatever you want him to do. So we need you to explain to our good dear men viewing yes. that despite all these treatments, you will remain with your manhood. Yes. You know the African be very clear of man. Simple, yes. simple, simple language. Clear. Simple language. So, so the path becomes a bit different okay. for an individual who has an enlarged non-cancerous prostate okay. compared to an individual who has an enlarged cancerous yes. prostate. Yes. Okay. okay? So what's mm. the path for the one for enlarged cancerous? An enlarged cancerous pros prostate, because we said the triggers of this cancer are coming from the testes, mm -hmm. okay? The mm -hmm. testes, we have to stop these triggers from oh. coming from the testes. Mm -hmm. And there are two ways to do it. There are medications available for you to swallow to suppress whatever is coming from the testes. Or we can perform what they call castration of some sort. Okay? <laughs> okay? Don't worry. <laughs> castration. No! no, 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 no let the man finish. Let the man finish. Let me finish. <laughs> so in this procedure, okay, we shall be able to open up the testes and remove the contents. Okay? It's like an egg with a yolk. Mm. Remove the yolk it's and no leave the shell. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, but, but so in that instance, mm. you will not be able to achieve the sexual pro <laughs> pro prolificness that you had before. But the you live. Will disappear. Z zero. It will be affected significantly. Okay. Yes. Yes. No, no, it's it's because, uh, because now, Albert, yes. this is where there is a choice. So Sometimes. You said a good uh, uh, a yes. Uh, uh, if, if I may just say something on that, Doctor. Um, yes. And I think it's something which we need to get clear to the viewers outside there. Yes. Um, in as much as these tests w are, are uncomfortable, like you say, because you get big stuck up your, your rectum and all that, what you will feel when you have cancer will be nothing compared, compared to that. That's because correct. Because that's when people end up on morphine, and even there are times that morphine doesn't even work. Correct. As you're in so much pain, that, so it's a very small price to pay, the truth be told. That's true. Um, and I, I, in also, in as much as, um, I know Banji is really worried about his, his, his manhood. I think prevention is better than cure. That's true. Um, there, there are ways of, of managing your testosterone. I don't know about the issue of exercise, because a lot of people have said that if you exercise a lot, you actually, your body consumes the testosterone. Because there are some people also, because um, as they grow older, they take testosterone to, rem to stop growing breasts and things like that. Mm. Are they doing themselves a disservice? Uh, well, testosterone... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, don't answer that. We need it to go into a, a break, okay. and as soon as we come back, uh, we'll talk about that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are here tonight at the Naguru Skies Hotel talking about prostate cancer. Clearly, Albert is traumatized. It's a tough one. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. In case you've just joined us, we are here at the Naguru Skies Hotel in this month of November talking about men issues, prostate cancer. Now, really, testosterone you know. so, increasing. Yes. yes, we want to know. We, yes, so, tell us. Mm -hmm. So, should we increase it or should we reduce it, especially as we, we grow older? And exercise, whatever that was. Yeah. Anything unnatural is not good for you. So supplements okay. are not good. So people taking testosterone hormone as a supplement, this should not be good for you. Mm -hmm. Exercising and working out and giving the heart more work to do, there are other things that are going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. The heart is going to fail to cope with the challenge that you're giving it. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> Exercise is good for you on the whole. Anything else unnatural. Mm -hmm. Supplements of hormones especially you destabilize the body grossly, okay? Try to live as naturally as possible. Please keep exercising, mm -hmm. keep exercising, okay? I have not read of any research paper that talks about exercise and cancer of the what? Of the prostate, okay? Probably they're there, okay? I'm yet to read them. So, no, no, um, I, 
again, um, there's a gym that I used to go to and um, there was a gentleman who was very worried because he was really big, he lost weight, and all that remained were his, his breasts, okay. So it, he was worried and um, the gym instructor was advising him to take testosterone to, to help work that Fight out. You know. breasts. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so he was a inviting even more trouble now. Huh? Yeah. Taking a hormone to correct something that has already gone wrong. Okay? Yeah. Please do not take uh, hormonal supplements unless they are indicated medically. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you get this as a prescription yeah. from, from your doctor for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. Even before they are prescribed, there has to be a very specific reason because you know we know the effect of these things on the body testosterone that is not yours from god is going to send your body into overdrive that yeah. your heart will not manage no, if, uh, let me ask you, just, i want to ask a question yeah, just one last thing mm -hmm. question because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm bringing guidance to my friend over here who is <laughs> very <laughs> traumatized about his family. Yeah. yes but he has now family in the in, in the event that um somebody has gone through the, the castration, as Banji has mentioned. Yes. Can, they, can drugs like Viagra be able to, to help them function sexually? Unfortunately, such drugs may not be able to help you because their mechanism of, of work is such that they have to augment or they have to, the to deal, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So this is something we do very seriously before we do the castration. Mm -hmm. Whether medical by you swallowing drugs or surgical by us cutting and emptying the contents of the but test. We cancel you mm -hmm. and we cancel men seriously and it's so amazing how important this sexual function is and it is because there are, there are quite a number that refuse. Okay? But many, because of the desired effects you get on this, on this PSA, when you have cancer of the prostate, the PSA we talked about is raised several yeah. fold, mm -hmm. okay? When we do the castration, we see that it reduces very significantly. significantly. Yes. And the, lively, the quality of life of the individual improves. It's like getting cancer and arresting it and putting it in a fridge. Okay, so, so the whole process is arrested there, which is advantageous. So I think the good doctor is there. At the compromise of what? Yes, Sex. mm -hmm. sexual so the function. The doctor is there. Mm -hmm. We have a choice as men that um, if we afford to be having the sick cells, we could choose to live a short and painful life and continue enjoying our sex as men. Oh, and Kufacha office. And Kufa, yes. <laughs> you can enjoy in pain. In pain. <laughs> Who yeah. says you can't enjoy in oh, pain? Oh, we have the choice to decide and leave. But also, you see, I, I think it is a decision now at an individual level. That's what I wanted to ask. That you have to make. That I wanted to ask two things. Mm. Online decision making, why isn't there so much awareness? As in, you're telling us these things, and these are old men. This is not a young man. Look at him. Mm. Looks like he's mm. like <laughs> came on upside away from that. Why isn't there awareness? And the second question: Are you guys, you doctors, are you doing any research? Because all oh, you've been talking about are chances, chances, chances. Is the, as Uganda, are the doctors doing research? I told you. Well, Makerere University is university number four in Africa. Mm principally because of research. And most of this research, a huge percentage of it, I think more than 40% of it, is channeled out from the medical school. There is a lot of research in, 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 in cancer of the prostate and all other cancers. You can Google, we have a center of excellence at the Uganda Cancer Institute, much as we have our Challenges, challenges yeah. here and there, and I will not talk for Uganda Cancer yeah. Institute, but I will talk as a doctor at least who has a chance to, to, to give out this information, mm. okay? Uh, the Cancer Institute alone has a wing that does awareness on cancer. Yeah. They even have a big bus, eh? a big bus that traverses the country testing okay, before you, be, as you as yes. you go on, on that, uh, there is too much of women, feminine, what, 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 breast cancer, this cancer, pelvic cancer. But there's, I don't hear anyone saying, it's gentlemen. Cervical cancer. A cervical. Cervical. Okay. Mm. Mm. Cervical. Mm. <laughs> cervical. Yeah, women. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. All those women. And yes. All jazz. Yes. Why, why isn't there any jazz about men? As in, you're, being to, you're telling 
men who are practical, I think, are old, maybe older than you, and they're looking at you like, what? Yes. Really? Yes. No. Come on. Yes. Why? As in, what's, what's the problem? Albert, before you... What's the problem? But before you, before you bargain yeah. the yes. doctor, yes. I, I think the doctor will agree with me that research, health, health science research has shown that women are more responsive oh. to health messages than men. They call it what? Health-seeking seeking behaviors. behaviors. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Women's health-seeking behaviors yes. cannot be compared yes. to men. They, they have the highest. Mm. Men, sometimes you hear the message and because you feel you're macho, you are like, mm. ah, no, I haven't I had that okay. That's the difference. I haven't actually, had that they, message. Actually, Albert, they are, they are, they are campaigns. Are, yeah. The uh, campaigns yeah. are there. Campaigns yes. that are falling on deaf ears. Oh, yeah. 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 you're yeah. listening it's in the wrong places. productions <laughs> I don't want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> as as yeah. Yeah. I haven't had this message. They are there. They are really there. I have a privilege to also be somewhere in the health sector. The messages are there. Just that uh, the, the health seeking behavior for men, it, it, it's like someone shouting at you in the wing. You don't hear properly what they are no, saying. No, 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 no. I disagree. I have a feeling that the people in the production, in the media, yes. prefer giving information to women because that's the, this, you are getting that's more money or something. Because so I, that is my belief. So, so, that is my belief. So, uh, allow me, yeah. allow me, sir. Yeah. Allow me, sir. You see, the best way to catch men's attention is to talk about the issue we've been discussing. Yes, that's mm -hmm. the point. Once there is something that can affect our sexual or performance, yes. so <laughs> oh, 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 men of all tribes, <laughs> all, all colors, yes. all religious persuasions, we are united as one to Amen. say, yes. Amen. what that's are we saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's when we are, there is no dispute. Yes. The pastor has spoken. And, and, yeah. and so, and so yeah, seriously, mm. and so when you get to know for example, when we were, this whole HIV prevention and all that, there's been, it's been difficult circumcising men, just even for hygiene purposes. Mm -hmm. But when self male circumcision came up and there was a chance that they could enjoy sex better, <laughs> men lined up and said, mm -hmm. take it away. Mm -hmm. I, I all am willing. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so, so I, I think that uh, one of the things that would catch men's attention in, in the promotion of uh, of of, of uh, testing for prostate, uh, the prostate and prostate cancer is that if you catch it early, it's possible to save the factory. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to save the factory, men are going to listen. Because I have never really paid attention to this until I go to find that, hey, so if we don't check this thing and something is done early, the, yeah. the factory can shut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Th yeah. That's a, a, a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, in terms of uh, the health uh, communication, we need to be communicating to the target audience in a way that is relevant to that target audience. Exactly. exactly. So it's possible that men have not been hearing this because they are like, yeah. whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have so, colleagues at the Uganda Cancer Institute and I can assure you, I will pass on this information. Yeah, because, Chris, you have raised the fundamental uh, question. Most of the health messages for men are not really linked to what to their number they, their what the man yes. believes. He, have you seen the not self for belief. The, the self-belief about a man is about his sex, sexual functioning. Mm -hmm. Se if, even when they talk about family planning, if you say, come and have few children, the man will not listen. But if you say, if your wife has few children, you will enjoy more sex, the man will listen. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. So the, the health sector has to look at the way they are packaging this message to the man. The man's factory is number one. You can rob his bank account. <laughs> <laughs> the man might not he may, forgive. He, may forgive. he may forgive you because you will make more money. Make an attempt. Even just think about robbing <laughs> his, his factory. factory. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I, I think uh, doctor, yes. one of the ways you can really appeal to us, and uh, and well, I'm speaking for myself, but also I think I'm also I would be representing some few men out there. Mm. That if we can link this to uh, the function of our factory, then we, we will go running there. Because now I have learned that there is a possibility of ex prolonging uh, my uh, expertise up to old age mm. if I check. Yeah. So you keep yeah, checking. So, yeah. so, so mm. tomorrow I have to go and check. Yes. Mm.
Mm. Oh. And make sure that the factory is, 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 is intact. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. one. That uh, for that one, I, can I will handle you personally. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can yes. take in more than one thing. <laughs> <now. laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tell you what. Um, and uh, the, the reality is, just as you said, I mean, that finger, as Chris put it, is a very small price to pay yeah. for elongated. I mean, uh, my, 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 grand, my grandfather had his last born at the age of 80. So, um, yeah, you, you can prolong the, mm. yes, yeah, yes, business. The, the business yeah, for mm. some time. Mm. Um, I have a doctor. We always say prevention is better than cure. Mm. But Peter, last born at 80, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's another discussion. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yet he died of prostate cancer. So you can yes. imagine. Wow. Uh, yes. Wow. It, it, so, yes. So, so what an advert for the Igaga family. No, maybe that's what kept him going for. We, for women longer. should get my Igaga family. Moving on swiftly. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, uh, Doctor, um, as we mentioned, one of men, as men, We've, we've, um, we've got our egos at, at, at play, and um, we are very, very scared of what you call it, of, um, of such things. Now, as we wrap up, because we've reached that point when we do actually have to, uh, to, to wrap up the show, mm. what words of comfort can you give men in your parting shot so that, yeah, more men can actually go, especially during this month, and, and make sure they get, uh, get screened? Well, if you're a man out there, it would be very nice. Not only would it be nice, it, it would be very commendable for you and your peers to get into the habit of routine checkup. Okay? Relevant to this month of November is cancer of the prostate. Okay? There are other things that begin to happen at the ages of 35, 40, 45. Hypertension, diabetes, but to stick to the point for prostate cancer, feel free to walk into the Uganda Cancer Institute, and I will not speak for them today because I'm not their representative, but I know and I have a chance to pass on this information. Go there, they will give you a very comforting welcome, okay? And they will be able to screen you in the best way possible. Like we have had their alternatives, okay? they should be able to counsel you into taking the rectal exam. If not, at least bare minimum, they will take off a blood sample and keep monitoring your PSA. Okay? So let us get more vigilant, okay? Because the earlier we catch these diseases, the better for us. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Banji, your parting shot. Uh, I think uh, one <laughs> important lesson we need to learn as, as, as men is that uh, our factory really needs to be kept in um, good, shape. good shape. It needs to be oiled. However, uh, there are diseases that come and want to interrupt our sources of pleasure. So we need to really check ourselves. What I know is, um, as I had said earlier from scientific evidence, is that men's ability to seek health services is really poor and it, 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 it links back to the way we are brought up that men don't cry even when you feel pain you, you are supposed to be strong but you see this psychological strength can only take you that far okay we, we cannot live uh, in denial the scientific facts are clear we need to go to be tested and then so that we know uh, what our future holds so uh, I think it would really be good practice for us to to test but also I think I need to speak to our wives that please you, you know Chris the, the person who can convince you easily is the wife so I think our wives should also come in and convince us so that once we reach 40 then we can have regular you know they should support us here. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. I actually thought you were going to ask the wives to support us <laughs> in other ways. <laughs> to, to, to continue supporting us. But <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, <laughs> All right. Uh, mine is very simple. Gentlemen out there who are below, below 35, as you said, 35, in their 20s, cancer these days attacks men. We're really, really early. So 
check, just keep checking. Just go for the PSA, just for the sake. Also and get, also yeah, also get married. Because if you don't get married early, man, Father Albert won't help you. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> those gentlemen out there, you have your fathers, you have your uncles, you have your bigger brothers. Take them for this testing. Just drag them if you can. As I said, if you can, if the wife can't do it, you can drag your brother, you can drag your father. Take them for this testing because my grandfather has died of prostate cancer. I'm sure I won't have it because you guys will help me out. Uh, <laughs> lastly, I want to encourage the medical uh, personnel out there. Continue doing the research. I'm a love of research. We are rooting out for you. Keep doing the research. We need better medication. We need better ways of of capturing this thing. The, the, we can. We. I do not see a, a scenario. Oh, I see a scenario that where we have castration as a really last last resort, and we. I see Makere, Makere being number one in research. So championing cancer. And then, please, the media out there, help us provide clear information in a very enticing way and very interesting way for men to learn about prostate cancer. Sure. Of Chris, you're yep. parting short. Man, I've learned a lot today. Um, uh, I thought I knew a thing or two about prostate cancer, but I've been schooled. <laughs> and so <laughs> thanks a lot, I think this has really been good, and I think uh, most of the men who've been watching this, and even ladies, have learned a lot. I, I, I really think that, um, that I think two things. One, one is to the ladies, um, married ladies. Please provide regular opportunity for sex for your husband. As in, like, this is national service. Because, um, like we discussed earlier in this show, it helps. Um, you know, to the semen, the, the testosterone, it's like just. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, is, is that I think that, that we are at a point where we, we can no longer say um, possibilities of things like this are too far from us. Um, I, I, I am a man of faith. I, I believe in a God who heals. I believe in supernatural health. But I also think that we need to just know where we are. And so we are able to deal with what we have and what's going on. So I'm going to encourage as many men as possible, um, guys in church, I want you to really consider going to test. I, I mean, I've never done this test, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because of what I've learned today. And I'd like you to join me and join these guys. And let's do this test. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've heard it from the men tonight. We have been talking about prostate cancer. There's not much more for me to we say. We fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> but all I can say is, first of all, men, um, make sure you get sex a minimum of three times a week. So yeah. Hey, yeah. Man. Yes, minimum. Yeah, three hey, a minimum man. of three times a week Kalangu, is Kalangu. advisable. It will help. I also insist, go and get tested. It might be uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. But what you will feel will be nothing compared to what you feel if you actually get castrated. So it's a very small price to pay. And with that, have a good night. Talk to people about uh, prostate cancer. Talk to everybody about it. Let's get tested. Let's get a healthier Uganda. And yeah, for God and my country, 